cranking system. Okay. In essence, there are three circuits. All right. The first circuit is the key and starter relay. So fuse, key switch, start relay coil. Okay. So this is your start relay coil. Remember, relays have two circuits, coil and contacts. All right. Now we have to then do the starter solenoid. So this switch turns on that coil. That coil closes another switch. So we have the other half of the start relay. Hmm. Okay, so here's your start relay contacts. All right. And then you have your starter solenoid coil. Make sure that's right. Starter solenoid coil. That's that's this is down on the starter. This is the big starter. Well, now we have to have the starting motor, cranking motor circuit. All right. So that usually just comes straight off the battery, obviously. All right. Well, that's going to come straight off the battery. Then it's going to go through the starter solenoid contacts. And then it goes to the cranking motor. Okay. There you go. That's all of them. <laughs> okay. Now there might be a neutral safety switch in here, but that's up to you to know because of schematic reading and, you know, that's something to consider. Is the machine in neutral? You know, does the scene is the is the is the truck in neutral? Is the transmission engaged? You know, do we have, you know, have we a transmission issue? That's where the ECM could be involved. I mean, the e transmission ECM could be, you know, um, problematic as well. So what we want to do is we want to rule out as many things that are working as possible. So what we're going to attempt to do is to find out what's working right. Okay. So the primary question we have to ask ourselves during any diagnostics. For any electrical is what's right, what's working right. That's very important. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. The first thing I want you to understand is that all three of these circuits are identical. Okay, this has bigger wire. Those contacts are inside the solenoid. Uh, that coil is inside a small relay. No, this is no. See, that's oh, nope. This is in the actual solenoid. So this and this are both on the starter on the motor, cranking motor, this and this are in the relay, and there's your key. Okay, so you close the key, start relay coil energizes. If that works, then those should close. If those close, that should turn on. If that turns on, then those should close, and if those close, that should run. All right, so let's talk about a basic diagnostic scenario. Number one, if we have a no crank situation, this is the system with these three circuits that are going to be involved. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to find out how much of it is working. Because if, if this circuit has failed, if, if this circuit has failed, these two are still working. So if these two are still working, we don't want to be working on these. Okay? So there's a way to do this. And the way that we can do this is by using some good basic diagnostic methodology. Okay, so the key is hard to get to. The start relay is not. The starter solenoid is easy to get to. And the cranking motor is pretty easy to get to. All right, so what a lot of people do is they'll come down and they'll use a, a remote start switch across the starter solenoid contacts, and that's perfectly okay. But then we have to figure out which part of these two circuits are not working if this one is and so forth and so on and and this this the start 
button's not a problem. That's not wrong. It's not, there's nothing really wrong about doing anything in here. Nothing that people have done before is wrong. Okay? But my methodology is I want to start as far away from the cranking motor as possible. Because if I can start as far away from the cranking motor as possible, then that means as soon as I hit something that's working, then I get to rule out everything else. So if you want to be fast at this, you need to be methodical. And if you're going to be methodical, you have to understand how the circuits work. Okay, so let's make sure we understand. We know what a key looks like, but the start relay looks like this. Right? And it's usually black. Right? And you don't know what's going on inside there. Okay? The starter solenoid, as we know, usually has a black cap on the end and looks like this and sits up on top. Right? It's got um, contacts on the end and it's got maybe a contact up here. Maybe it's got another contact back here. Well, what's inside here is a coil of wire and a set of contacts. Well, what's inside here? Coil of wire and a set of contacts. So guess what? This part and this part are the same part. They work exactly the same. This one just happens to be a little bit bigger. Okay? So I'm going to show you a simple way to determine from the start relay whether or not the rest of the system is working and whether or not the key is working because this is what I consider to be the heart of the system. So the start relay, in my opinion, you need to know where it is, and you need to know how to get to it, and I'm going to show you a quick method for ruling out as much of the starting system, or the cranking system, excuse me, see, that's, see how easy that is? The cranking system, to make sure you understand how this all works.